Today I'm going to go over a tutorial on how to set up a Bazel workspace um, and how to build some Go code and run some Go tests with Bazel. Um, so Bazel is a build system and a build system means that it abstracts away the compiling and running of code uh, to be hermetic and it takes a compilation or a build or a run action to be a set of inputs which are defined in build files um, which is a type of build configuration and a set of outputs which is defined by the types of rules that are written um, to create and run artifacts so it's a way to make your build reproduce uh, the exact same way on every machine um, and it makes the build hermetic so everything downloaded from the internet for example uh, go package.yaml um, is going to be explicitly defined. Uh, so this is a basic binary um, which has a basic test which uses stretcher testify. Um, so a couple things in the go mod file um, and then we also have some test data which is consumed by the test and I'll show you how to configure everything there. Uh, we're we're going to first create a new module dot basil file and we're going to create a new build dot basil file so module dot basil is going to define the things we install and the build dot basil is going to define the rules that we build so our binary and our test so we're going to say basil build everything cool build completed successfully now we can create a new uh, dot basil version um, and let's use 8.0.0 uh, so now we're building on the latest version of Bazel which is excellent so modules are a new form of dependencies in Bazel um, that are used in a system called BZLmod uh, which is similar to NPM or Go modules um, so we're going to go look at the Bazel central registry and find rules go which is a system for describing how to build um, rules for building the Go language. Uh, so let's build something. I think we have to define a module first. Um, so call this module name equals binary test. Let's build everything. Great. Um, now rules go defines rules for how to build go um, but we also need something called gazelle uh, and gazelle is used to generate build files so let's load gazelle um, so we have gazelle here uh, so gazelle let's go look at gazelle so the majority of the documentation here is about the legacy workspace system, which is Bazel's old way to install repositories. Um, but since we're trying to use the new system, BZL mod, let's go look at the BZL mod docs. Now that we have rules go and gazelle installed, uh, we need to download an SDK, which is actually the go tool chain and the software development kit that lets us run go. Uh, so here we have a couple systems, but we really only need to use the version, um, so just, we'll just take the top one, which is a simple one, uh, go sdk.download, and we can get rid of the other two. So now uh, we need to generate our build files. So we can do this by adding a top level build file, uh, which is what our build.basel is, and defining a gazelle. Now let's add a gazelle prefix, which tells uh, gazelle how to refer to itself. So this is the name of repo we're using. So let's just use that. Excellent. Let's see if we can run gazelle. So the name, so this is a basal rule, is defined by the name of the target. So since this is at the root of the repo, uh, I can refer to it like this slash slash which means root of repo and then the name is after the colon now if this was in something like the test data folder then we would refer to it as test data there and then based on the 
directory it's in, it looks like that. Great, so that's how we refer to our rule. Now let's run it. Awesome, so look what it did. It generated these rules for us. So this is a Go library based on the main.go. This is a Go test based on the main test. And it even created a test data data attribute, which means data attributes mean you can read these files during the runtime of the test. So now we have a binary, a library, and a test. So let's run Bazel test everything to see if we can test it. And this fails. And the reason why it fails is because it can't reference this external repo. So some some reason this repo is not able to find. So this right here is called a Bazel label. A label is built from three parts. The repository name, the path, which right here is empty, and the path is normally a package name, and the target name in that package. So here this is the repo, this is the package, and this is the target. So the problem is we can't reference these repos because our workspace isn't downloading them in the module.bazel file. So let's go back to the gazelle um, or the rules go docs on BZL mod. And what we need to do is we need to register the go mod file to get the external dependencies. So let's copy these over and the nice thing is we don't have to explicitly type them out we just need to run basil mod tidy. And basil mod tidy will pull them in automatically and these are now references that we can use here and it tells the basil workspace which one to download. So now if we run uh, Bazel test everything. The tests pass. And this is really nice because these aren't simple tests. These are tests that are reading run files from the test data package and they're correctly building them. Cool. Now let's try running a binary. So here we have the binary. Uh, we want to call basil run on the binary. So now that's the name of the target. And then we're going to pass in an argument of the input. So the input equals test data slash test.yaml. So you can see right here. So let's run that. And it can't find it. And the reason why it can't find it is because it's running the binary, not in the local workspace. It's running it in a sandbox uh, so that it doesn't get impacted by the, the local environment. So what we can do here is we can give it an absolute path, and then it works, which is very cool. Awesome. So let's clear this up. Now lastly, how do we actually get a package binary that we can give to someone else? What we can do is we can bazel build the binary. And then it outputs the, this thing. And this thing is actually the built binary. And bazel bin here is actually a symlink to the output base. So it's a pretty long path. It's very complicated. Um, but we can take this thing, copy it, so cp this, and we can copy it to go binary tutorial. And we this is an x86 machine, so it's an x86 uh, Darwin. Uh, so you can only use a binary built for binary, or sorry, you can only use a binary built for Mac OS Darwin um, a x86 architecture on a machine that's a Mac OS Darwin machine. So let's copy it over. And then now we have this binary here. 
But what if we want to run that directly? Well, let's look up Bazel native binary rules. So native binary is a rule in Bazel Skylib. Cool. So we first need to import Bazel Skylib. So let's go to our Bazel central registry. Look for Bazel Skylib. So now we have Bazel Skylib. Let's copy it and put it into our module.bazel file. And now we're going to import this native binary rule. So we're going to say in our build file, we're going to have load at the name of the repo, Bazel Skylib, and then path to the package, rules native binary. Rules is the name of the package, native binary is the name of the file. Then we're going to import native binary. Cool, now we're going to make a native binary so we can use a pre-built binary and actually ship it. Um, so we can do this by saying native binary, which we loaded from up here. Uh, and the name, let's just do pre-built for some pr simplicity. And then the source is going to be that file we created. Uh, and a file you can always just refer to as the name of the file. Uh, cool, let's try to run it. Bazel run pre-built. Nice. Input flag is required. Bazel run input equals pwd. Awesome. So today I showed you a few things. Um, one is how to set up a Go binary and Go test using Bazel and Gazelle. And then I showed you how to generate the rules for the binary uh, and test using Gazelle. And then I showed you how to build it into an executable package. And then uh, I went into how to use Bazel Skylib to run a binary in a, in a hermetic way uh, that's already been pre-built so you don't need to rebuild the binary each time. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.